I left the uh, National Broadcasting Commission in 1996. I was elected as the president for Eastern Highlands Provincial Council of Women. Uh, being newly elected, uh, I was to represent the women and being the president, being the voice of the women in Eastern Highlands, I had to give a petition to the governor at that time uh, to ban alcohol and uh, uh, pokies in Eastern Highlands, uh, poker games, poker machines. So I took a petition on behalf of the women of Eastern Highlands. We went and gave the governor that time, and the governor at that time uh, refused by saying that uh, the tax that comes from liquor and the tax that comes from the gaming board or the pokies game that is in the province, it goes towards the internal revenue. So we cannot listen to you women. So that's when I got upset and that's when I got so provoked that I said, okay, this time I'll challenge the seats. I'll, I'll get into politics, I'll challenge the governor at that time just to make him that he won't win this, win, win back his seat. So I contested the 1997 election and that, that was not, uh, the politics was not in my mind. I did not want the governor's seat, but I just want to make sure that the governor at that time does not get the seat again. And I want to prove to him and to other men in Eastern Islands that we women can do it and we women must be heard. When we come with petitions, when we come with our issues, we want the politicians at the time when they in, in office, they must hear us women and they must listen to our petition. So I contested the election in 1997 and I came number fourth place and the governor at that, that time came number fifth. He came fifth, so I knew that that's it, that's it. That's the way forward now, women, so let's all gear up. So by that, that after contesting the 1997 uh, elections, I did not look back. Okay, I contested again in 2002 and then there was another politician in the Highlands region that that uh, challenged us women again, saying that you women, I, we cannot give you free seats in the parliament. We cannot give you reserve seats. We cannot give you seats in the parliament on golden plate. You come like the way we men came. You come on the level playing field. So that's when they challenged us again. I was further provoked to, okay, I'll continue to try. And then 2012, I came number one. So uh, perseverance has paid off at last. Perseverance. Okay. Perseverance, thank you. Just one more question. Um, can you describe yeah, the, the, the relationship you had with your father and his expectations mm -hmm. for you, or the way that you saw that, your obligations mm -hmm. by virtue of your, your dad's position in, in the oh, oh, oh. Well, I, I was his uh, second last child. I was the child that he really wanted and he really loved. He wanted me to be a boy, but I became a, a girl and he shed tears over me being a girl. But then I was his favorite, so he always loved me. He always cared for me. He did everything that I wanted. He made sure I had money. He made sure I was educated. When, I'm, when we have a traditional sinsin in the place, he does not dress me up in the traditional attire of the, wo the, wo the woman, the traditional costume of the woman, no. He dresses me up in the costume that men wear. My father cared for me as though I was a, a boy child. I, I didn't want his dreams to die. I didn't want him to see that I'm a lady. I want to tell my father that what men can do, I can do, even though you think I'm a woman. So I do not want my father's dreams and aspirations to die. So that's why I kept on fighting until now. I'm a politician. So I know that he's a, politi a politician, a paramount chief, and his legacy must live on. That's why I had to contest and contest. And uh, at last, uh, I have the parliament seat, and I know my father is happy in the spirit. Thank you.